Hi guys, it's Lindsay. Welcome back to The Wandering Reader. Today I'm going to be doing a review of History of Wolves by Emily Fridland. This is the third book that I have read for the Man Booker shortlist. And this is a story about a, uh, about a main character called Linda. And she is a teenager. And she's quite a strange teenager. She is... Um, considered a bit of a freak. Um, she's called a freak by her classmates. Um, she's very isolated. She doesn't have a lot of friends or any friends really. Um, and yeah, so she's a very strange, odd character. Um, and one day a family move in across the lake from her. She lives in a sort of dilapidated cabin um, by the side of a lake in Minnesota and this family move into a cabin across the lake from her and she gets involved in this family. She um, meets the mum and the son and she starts babysitting for the son. His name is Paul, he's four years old. But there's something about this family that's not right and that, that description that I've just given you, that's basically what the blurb says and when I did my long list video this was one of the books that I was most interested in because the blurb just sounded so intriguing I wanted to know why this family was so strange why it was sort of the wrong idea for her to get involved with them unfortunately I just felt like I didn't get enough of that storyline um, we sort of jumped about quite a bit in the book so uh, the book is actually being narrated by a 37 year old Linda so she's sort of looking back at what happened and telling you about her past but she also gave you snippets of other bits in her life like the beginning of the book is, is focused around Linda at school and this sort of weird sort of obsess obsession that she has with one of her classmates and also with a, with a teacher um, and then there are other moments where we get to see what life is like for, in, for Linda as an adult. Um, and then, the, the, but you would expect from the blurb that the main bit of the storyline is her and this family. And it is, but I just kind of felt like I didn't get enough of that. And there were quite a few gaps that, that weren't kind of filled in for me at the end. I felt like I had still had an awful lot of questions and perhaps that was Fridland's point. You know for you to kind of do better working out a bit of surmising for yourself what well, I kind of felt like I needed a bit more I needed a bit more explanation or yeah it was a bit there were a few too many sort of gaps for me I did think the writing was good and um, this is a debut novel so I was impressed with um, yeah how she put her ideas together the descriptions of the setting in particular were really good so it's um, northern, I think it's northern Minnesota that Linda lives and um, she lives kind of in, in a cabin in the middle of the woods by this lake and all of the descriptions of the woods, especially in the winter time, were really vivid and yeah, I felt like I had this really good picture in my head of what it was like. So that was great. Um, it's not your traditional narrative structure and it doesn't necessarily need to be a traditional narrative structure for me to enjoy it but I think the jumping around kind of took me out of the story and I didn't always think it was necessary. So I did enjoy this one. I would say that it is um, definitely a book that I would recommend just because the sort of mystery element of this is good to think about. I also liked the way that this dealt with the themes of science and religion. I thought the commentary that it made on those two things was really interesting. Um, I like the way that she wrote about Linda as a main character. Linda is very, like I said, very odd, very strange. She is very naive and doesn't really understand the, what to do in social situations or you know she she almost doesn't have seem to have these kind of base instincts when it comes to how to interact with people and I kind of felt felt myself at times you know almost exclaiming out loud 
you know, say something, do this, why didn't you do that, why didn't you say that, or whatever it might have been. But then I suppose you have to think back to the fact that she was a teenager, um, and a teenager or a child that grew up in a very unique situation, her, um, she was born in a commune which um, broke up I think when she was sort of like a young child or something like that, and her parents don't seem particularly warm or normal um yeah i found their whole relationship quite strange so i suppose because she is a teenager and because of the way that she's been brought up you can't really blame her for not knowing what to do in those situations but at the same time some of her reactions and what she does they were a little bit they were quite odd uh, but she was a great character to read about um, yeah, so I ended up giving this one 3.5 stars. Like I said, I would really recommend it. Um, I Yeah, the sort of mystery element to it, the descriptions of the settings, the unique character that you've got in here. I do really think it's a great read. Yeah, 3.5 stars. So there you go, guys. That was my review of History of Wolves by Emily Fridland. I'd love to have a chat with you in the comments below. Have you read this book? What did you think of it? Thanks very much for watching guys and I will see you in my next video. Bye.